This podcast is brought to you by Bonus Room Productions and We Own This Town. I am Jason T. Mears, Esquire. And I'm Kelly Hoyle Bullock. And we are San Dimas Today. How's it going, Kelly? Pretty good, JT. I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that. It, it's a relief to me. Um, whatever day this is, whatever time it is right now, I don't know. It's all meaningless at this point other than we just, you know, we need a release date for Face the Music. Yeah, I mean, it's still technically the 28th of August, right? Technically? Yep. But who knows? So uh, we'll see what happens. It, uh Alex Winter did say that there would be an update coming soon. So hopefully in the next week or two, we'll get some uh, new information uh, and adjust accordingly. Yeah. And it's definitely time for a, a, a new trailer. You know, if I had my say so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give me all the trailers, all the trailers <laughs> right now. Let's do it. I could also see them timing this with, uh, you know, with the release announcement with the new trailer. That would be a good move. Uh, I mean, um, I'm available. Uh, I'll, Take hourly payment if you need my advice uh, on releasing movies. But, <laughs> dude, if I had a movie to release, I would pay you to tell me how to do it. Thanks. So, Appreciate you've got that. my trust. So, man, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. And it definitely felt like a lesser movie, uh, you know, storyline wise. Uh, but you know, kind of going into it, just just like for it being total fun. Uh, it was, it was perfect. You know, it checked off a lot of the, the boxes. I, my expectations I think were, were pretty much right on for what I got. Yeah. You know, this, uh, it had the over the top action and whatnot. Uh, it leaned heavily, more heavily into like the sci-fi elements with, uh, Idris Elba's character, Brixton, you know, being black Superman. Um, what, what struck me most about this movie is they did, make a nice little shift. This was a throwback in my opinion to like the late eighties, early nineties buddy action movies, Mm -hmm. you know, like Tango and cash or Harley Davidson and the Marlboro man, you know? Um, so it, I think on the strength of the chemistry between Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham, it really worked, but yeah, this is not as emotionally soaring as somehow the better, uh, movies of fast and furious actually became. No, you're dead on. I, I I read as much like The Rock said. That's exactly what he was going for. Uh, that kind of late '80s buddy action comedy. I enjoyed it. There were there were a lot of little things I liked. Uh, you know, obviously there were some great uh, cast cameos. Some maybe not so great. And there were I did have a few a few issues with some of the stuff there that I'm afraid is just going to date this movie if we watch it like five ten years from now. Uh, I wasn't super hot on the Game of Thrones references. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like watching that a year out from, you know, when the show ended. Now this came out right after the show ended, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like, perfectly on point there, captured the zeitgeist. But I, I don't think in five or ten years people are going to be caring about Game of Thrones. I think you're absolutely right there. What did you think about some of the surprise cameos? They made a little bit more sense after I kind of did my research on the director afterwards. So yeah. the Ryan Reynolds thing made more sense, right? Because he had, he had just directed Deadpool 2. Yeah. The Kevin Hart cameo, I didn't quite get as much, uh, <laughs> which is fine. That guy's totally outside my wheelhouse. Um, that stuff was okay to me. Um, it was kind of, it felt gimmicky, but I think at the, at the same time, they're they're obviously trying to give this its own sort of sense of humor uh, that's different from some of the other Fast and Furious movies. Sure. Going back to uh, Deadpool 2, Rob Delaney, who was also in that with Ryan Reynolds as the counterpoint to Ryan Reynolds. I, I loved seeing him show up. I, I love that guy. I'll watch him in anything. Yeah, that was a great call. Him as the CIA agent, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. He was he was perfect. Um and then I loved, uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, putting in the uh, trip to Samoa. You know, it's definitely a nod toward his, towards his uh, actual family in Samoa. Um, the Rock is, uh, you know, he's he's part of this revered uh, family, if you will, though I don't know that everyone's technically blood related, but it's the Inoue, I think I'm saying that right, Inoue wrestling family in Samoa, like Yokozuna, part of it i think maybe 
some of the snookas were part of it. Uh, just a, a legend, legends in wrestling, and uh, Roman Reigns, who is you know a current WWE wrestler, is part of that family as well, and has a cameo as his younger brother or one of his yeah, younger Mateo. brothers. That was absolutely very cool, and I I knew when we were watching um, Fate of the Furious when you were all about the Samoa soccer scene. I, I knew you this would be right up your alley, and and I'm a sucker for any callbacks to like classic uh, samurai films or classic westerns, and, and that whole thing um, reminded me uh, of like a wonderful riff on uh, Seven Samurai or the Magnificent Seven. You know, yeah. Yeah, I just love that stuff. I eat that stuff up. <laughs> and a uh, shout out to the great actor Cliff Curtis too, playing his older estranged brother. Mm-hmm. Um, he is from New Zealand, but that guy has played uh, so many different uh, races and national origins of characters over the year because he's just like so malleable. It's like <laughs> he he was in Three Kings as an Iraqi citizen. Uh, he was in uh, uh, Training Day as like the head of the Hispanic gang. Oh wow! Um, he just he's just made a lot of turns, played a lot of really different roles, and it was cool to see him pop up here. You know, uh, one thing with the cast that really disappointed me, and th- th- this is how disappointed I am in this movie. This is the third time I've seen it, so and it's only been out for a year, right? Um, but I love Idris Elba. I just I didn't quite like him in this role. Like he, I didn't get the full Idris Elba effect from Brixton Lore that I, I expected to. I don't know, and maybe it it, it kind of played like. Charlize Theron in the last uh, Fast and Furious movie where I, I don't know that the the dialogue was written to the strengths of these actors, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Where you're, you're just, it's, it's like you, you kind of need to recognize what it is they do and then cater it to them. That's that's how you, you flex a star like this, you know? Oh, you're absolutely right. And that's what's worked so well in the Fast and Furious series pr- prior to this, right? Like mm-hmm. when they introduced Luke Hobbs, that was Dwayne Johnson, right? I mean, they mm-hmm. perfectly tailored to him. Same with Deckard Shaw, perfectly tailored to him. But yep. then, you, you know, they, they start losing that. And maybe it's like, well, what if we got this actor or this actor? And mm-hmm. they could have maybe spent another week or two uh, tightening up the lines or the dialogue to fit them more. I think I think you, you nailed it there. I, I totally agree with that. Um, because I love both of them. I just didn't love them in these movies, which is odd because, you know... Um, kind of what these movies are really good at some interesting what ifs i was finding about uh you know really kind of read up on this uh in the last day or two and uh so first of all the thing i'd love to point out and you you may have already found this out uh and what really connects this to uh back to bill and ted is that the the faceless director Mm -hmm. uh keanu reeves was in negotiations to play that role Yep, my understanding um, is he still is. Like they're oh, still trying okay. to work it out. Yeah. Great. So they they purposely left that like faceless so that they could plug somebody in and he's one of the people being considered. Great. Yeah. That would yeah. that would be awesome. It, he needs that good action action movie villain role, you know. It's time. Oh, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Plus, you know, he's not going to tarnish his image. Um he's already got the Matrix 4 um, obviously face the music, but John wick four, whenever that comes out, I mean, he's, he's going to be a hero stud forever. So he can take a cool villainous turn. And, and I think he'd be just fine. Probably even do better than fine. Yeah. Now the, the director of the movie, uh, David, I don't know if it's leech or Leitch, how you pronounce that, but, uh, uh, I, I did not realize he was co-director of, uh, John wick. And uh, he's uncredited, uh, ended up giving the full credit to Stahel- Chad Stahelski, but that they co-directed it, and then he's produced the sequels. So huh. um, it'll be great if, if, if he can land Keanu. Um, but that leads me to the other big what if here, is that uh, I'd also read that Shane Black was initially considered to direct this movie. <laughs> Dude, that would have been perfect, because the thing I was going to... I wanted to get to with buddy movies is like, this one is great. Right. Mm -hmm. But we also have, uh, the nice guys, which came out a few years ago. Right. But talk about a movie. Of course it was written and directed by Shane black, the master of these. Mm -hmm. Um, but that one was so much fun and such a great return to, to action buddy 
comedy movies. Yeah, unbelievable. His, you know, you just you just don't don't get a better writer than Shane Black. You really mm-hmm. don't. It was good to see Helen Mirren back. Um, mm-hmm. And I hope what we're getting set up for in the next movie is her having a much larger role. Uh, it feels that way, um, especially with that end credit scene, right? Yeah. Where they they're they're about to break her out, mm-hmm. and I feel. Uh, well, whether or not it's the next Hobbs and Shaw or the next Fast and Furious, uh, because they could tie her back into their ongoing battle with Cipher. I, I, I think from what I read, uh, Theron's going to be back in the next in F nine, right? Well, interesting that you mentioned that because we're going to pause this call in a few minutes. You're going to actually go watch the trailer for Fast Nine, and then we're oh, going to yeah. come back and discuss. Yes. So. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I I thought Vanessa Kirby was fantastic. Right, yeah, as the sister, that was, she was great. I had did did not familiar with her at all. Uh, anything else she's done, um, she fit right in. Uh, yeah. Great job. I think she um, was in like the Crown, doesn't she? Like play the yeah. She she's been in the Crown. She's done some of the Mission Impossible movies. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, like. It, it, she's got a nice mix of, of uh, dramatic and action, but she went toe to toe with uh, both Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham. I mean, like she was kind of the, for my money, like the, the MVP of this movie. She's just fantastic. Did a great job playing off both of those guys and interesting twists, like uh, sort of becoming a love interest for the rock, which, uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, that worked for me. That worked for me. I, I kind of wasn't sure. I was going to feel about the rock being in a, you know, in a love story. Right. It, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, there's some guys like, like Schwarzenegger where I just, I don't buy any romantic involvement in any of the movies. You know, I just kind of blow it off. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, there, there's certain types of charisma, right? Like you have the Schwarzenegger charisma, which is more like, Oh, that dude is awesome. And, uh, you know, he's just a powerhouse and he can do some, one-liners but they work kind of in spite of his charisma style i think dwayne johnson Mm -hmm. is way more actual charisma on top of being a badass i think he's more charismatic than i mean he's a badass right he's he's obviously a a giant of a man a physical specimen very impressive but i think like his actual star power comes from uh I, i don't know he's got that x factor where you like him, you know, you just like him. I don't know if Arnold Schwarzenegger has that. I think you respect Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't think you like, I, I, I don't think you necessarily like him. And I think with Dwayne Johnson, why it might work is because he has that where a Schwarzenegger doesn't or a sure, Stallone. Sure. There's warm and fuzzies with the, with the rock that you're just never going to get from Schwarzenegger or Stallone. You're just always going to kind of fear those guys. <laughs> yep. Yep. So. No, I mean, they're like Stallone in the original Rocky, you know, I mean, that, that's different than Stallone and Cobra, right? Sure. Sure. I, yeah. I'm thinking more Rambo and right. less Rocky. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. So I mean, <laughs> I wanted to make that clarification. That's why I'm a little bit iffy on Stallone, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's the reason why. And it is impressive when a movie like that can pull something like that off. So there, mm-hmm. are, there are a lot of good things in this. I, I still think it was a lot of fun. Um, I'll I'll watch it again. It's on HBO Max all the time, and it's it's something fun to have on in the background. So do we, we want to watch the trailer? Yeah, let's watch the trailer. Excellent. Well, hell. <laughs> <laughs> why why even see a movie now? I, I think I got everything I needed out of that trailer. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Man. Okay, so the obvious thing: Han is back. That certainly looks like, you know, not a flashback, right? Oh, it's not. It is not. It is not at so, all. Yeah. Somehow Han survived. Now, you mentioned it a little bit last week, the whole movement of justice for Han, right? And yep. I had read an interview with Chris Morgan, and he was talking about how they're going to address that, that Deckard Shaw will at some point have to make amends, right? And okay. he's got that line in Hobbs and Shaw, and and Chris Morgan was saying that was definitely put in there on purpose, and he's definitely referencing killing Han. So, mm-hmm. will be fun to see 
how they wrote him out of dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is one of my I favorite mean, things about this franchise. Right, right. I mean, like you've been saying all along, nobody's really dead. So, um, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. It's interesting also that they chose to have Mia come back um, mm-hmm. because that that is also putting a little bit of a a spotlight on the missing piece of Brian, right? I mean, it makes sense that she'd be around for her other brother to show up, but it's just interesting. I, it, it's another thing that they got to kind of walk around. It looks to me like she and uh, and Michelle Rodriguez are going to have the bigger roles that they that at least Michelle Rodriguez was saying she needed to have to continue being in the franchise. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, John Cena looks like he's going to be a lot of fun. I hope so. Like you, you're used to seeing him in lovable comedic roles, right? Making that transition from wrestling to more of a teddy bear guy. Uh, I don't consider him a villain as much, so I, I'm excited to see how he plays being a villain. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think that'll be cool. And Cipher is back. Her name is still Cipher, and that's a thing. And she has a magnet plane, so that's exciting. <laughs> Better hair this time. <laughs> I guess. I guess it's better. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> There's nowhere to go but up, but uh, the page boy look, that's, that is, that is a choice, just like Cypher. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> frustrating that movie was supposed to be out a few months ago, and now we have to wait, you know, almost another year for it. Yeah, you know, a lot of that tension that we discussed from the eighth movie really bled into Hobbs and Shaw getting a release date earlier than F9, and F9 was initially pushed back because of Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. And so there's definitely a bit of a rift there. I think, um, mm-hmm. pro- probably a reason we don't, you don't really see any cameos in, uh, Hobbs and Shaw from, from the other fast and furious cast members. So, right. Yeah. I think that was a choice. And what I've read about the, the sequel to Hobbs and Shaw, which is in development and they're Chris Morgan's back to write that one. Uh, they're looking to introduce a whole new cast of characters. Like okay. More more so than you know the the first movie. So, um, Dwayne Johnson has said there's going to be some new, obviously new villains, but there's going to be uh, some new anti heroes. It it almost sounds like they're going to figure out a way to set up some sort of side team with Hobbs and Shaw doing their own non Toretto shenanigans. Right. So al- almost more of like a Mission Impossible type thing with uh, a new crew than staying total spinoff or side venture of fast and the furious. I did see where the rock had made some social media posts had something to do with like, you know, squashing the beef with Vin Diesel, but he made the comment like, I'll be seeing you soon Toretto. And now everyone's speculating. He'll have a cameo in F nine. Ah, so <laughs> I'd, I'd be all for it. I'd be all for it. Well, man, we just got one movie left. That's right, and it's it's uh, how how do we term this one? Like, it's not really a spinoff. It existed before <laughs> all the Fast and, and Furious movies, except for the first one, <laughs> right? Tangentially related, but uh, better better luck tomorrow, right? Yep, uh, Justin Lin's first like major feature film. Uh, Han, the character of Han, is created in this movie, which he then brings into the Fast and Furious world in Tokyo Drift. So. Uh, I don't know. I'm 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 excited to see it. Just just from a, a a pure level of of loving movies, this one always had a great review. It's considered a really great debut for from a mm-hmm. new writer director. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited too. I'm excited too. Well, um, we'll circle back next week and talk about that one, and then we'll keep our ears to the ground for more Bill and Ted news, and then you know we're gonna start trying to schedule some stuff and get back to your regularly scheduled Bill and Ted content. Yeah. Season three. Yeah. (laughs) How do we get here? No, I, I on Facebook had a memory yesterday on Facebook that we announced this podcast two years ago this week. That's, that's pretty sweet anniversary, man. Thanks for remembering. It is. It is is pretty cool. (laughs) Pretty, Pretty cool. It's been a most excellent ride, dude. Well, as always, when we're on this most excellent ride, we have to thank We Own This Town and Michael Eads. Uh, and particularly Michael, he's been having some fun doing all the uh, the artwork for our Fast and Curious series. So I want to give him extra props for that. 
I mean, his artwork has always been phenomenal, but he's really taken it up a notch. That that yeah. uh, battleship submarine on the last one was just delightful. I, just delightful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Got to thank uh, Scott Bricklin and Scooby Tunes Music for the use of Walk Away. Um, I was listening to the soundtrack in the car the other day, and that song came on, and I was like, how's it going, Kelly? And my daughter said, what are you doing? And I was like, sorry, it's habit, hon. But, uh, you know, it's great hearing that song. And I, every time I hear it, I think about this show and I think about you, buddy. And uh, it just makes me happy. It makes me happy, too. It makes me think about being excellent to each other and mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. And partying on, dudes. That's weird. I'm looking at the uh, poster for it, and like, yeah, yeah it is. Uh, same here. I'm just like, kind of like, hmm. I don't know if I love that. They they <laughs> got some of them right, but Carlin does not look like Carlin. You know, no. Bill and Ted don't look like Bill and Ted. Um, Lincoln looks pretty good, and and Joan of so Arc. Great, so great. So looks a little younger. You know, he does. Looks, he does. Maybe it's the shades. Good. Maybe. Maybe he stole Rufus's shades, and that's why he looks younger. <laughs> they did Terry oh, Camilleri all wrong here. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like, well, he's just a, a white dude in a hat, so that's fine. 